So Elementor have very recently released another beta version of Elementor Pro. And with that, we now get an update to the beta version of the Loop Builder, which allows us to start working with some of the WooCommerce features. My testing of this very briefly has been that it is still very, very janky at this point in time. So as with all these things, don't use this on a live site because there are still issues ongoing with it. So be careful with it. But let me just quickly show you how you can get started, how you can use this and how we can kind of see where it's going to go. Now, one of the things I do like about this is it means that we have less reliance upon third party tools when we want to create our own custom shop pages, our shop archive pages, product pages, loop designs, and all those things will now be included inside just Elemental Pro itself. So that is a good step forward. Let's take a look at how this works and probably come across a few issues as we go through the video. Now, before you can even test this out, if you want to test it out for yourself, you're going to need to come into the settings section of Elemental, into the experiments and ensure that you have two things enabled. First of all, you need to make sure that you've got the Flexbox container enabled, which is now in beta. So one step closer to actually being released. And you need to also make sure you've got the loop feature enabled. Once you've got those enabled and you've saved everything, you will then have those features ready to start working. So let's go ahead into the template section and go into the theme builder. Now there's two ways you can approach creating the loop design. You can do it inside the theme builder itself, or when you insert the loop widget into a page or a template, you can then create the template from inside there and it'll kind of jump you into this process anyway. So I've kind of found that both of them have a few issues. Sometimes they're not as reliable as you would expect. So be prepared to have issues at this point in time. But let's go ahead, first of all, and create our loop item. We're going to click to add one in. This then takes us into Elementor itself. Now, one of the things that still bugs me about this whole process is that we don't get asked at the beginning of this to give this template a name. It basically just assigned it some Elementor gibberish. And to go ahead and change that at this point, in case you forget, which I always do, you're going to need to come into the set in section and change this from Elementor loop item number 317, which means nothing. So let's call this Fruity Woo Loops. For no other reason than I can. Okay, so Preview settings, if we come into here, we want to change this from being posts to a product. We want to change this and we'll say, let's just put something like sweater in that I know there's a, a product in there called that. And we come into the query and we change this to products. Hit apply and that will then take us back in and we can start working. So now once we've done that, we're ready to start creating our loop template. Now, bear in mind, this is just for that one individual card design, like we've seen many, many times before. And if you want to see my previous videos on the loop, check out the link in the description. It's in there. Okay, so this is now our placeholder for our loop item. You can see our recommended options are basically the same options you see inside the single product template section. So your featured image, which is your product image, your product title, and so on. So let's go ahead and start pulling some of these items in. Let's grab the featured image, drop that into our preview area, and then see there's our sweater image. And we can control this in exactly the same way as we'd normally expect. You wanna link this to the product? Well, I'll simply click on the link, say custom URL, click on the dynamic tags and say post URL, and that will now connect that up to the product for you, which is always good practice anyway. Let's go back to our Rubik's Cube and all our widgets. Let's say we want to grab the product title and drop that underneath. That now drops that in so we can quickly come in and we can style this a little bit if we want to. This is just picking up the global styling. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. So we'll say there's the actual details. Now let's go back out and do the same thing again. So we can say we'll grab the product price, drop that underneath the sweater. And for some reason that doesn't actually show any product price. So again, this is one of those things that sometimes you get these kind of quirky things where data isn't shown. This may be because it's a variable product and there's a multiple different pricing things going on. But let's just go ahead and change the color scheme and the typography anyway, in the hope that this actually works. Let's go back out of here and we'll say we want to put the short description underneath that. Again, we can style this if we want to. And sometimes you tend to find this doesn't actually update any styling on you whatsoever. And the reasoning is that sometimes your theme and that overrides it, which I'm using the hollow theme anyway, so you'd think it would work. Hey ho. Okay, so the final thing we're going to drop in is the add to cart, because that's available to us. Let's drop that inside there. There's our add to cart button. And if you want to set the control of the button and the layout of it, you can do that as well. But let's say we're happy with the look and feel of this. Let's click on publish. 
and that's the loop template created. So now we can hop back out of here, exit back to our dashboard and come back into our templates. And for this example, we're going to go back into the theme builder and we're going to create an archive template for all of our product archives. So we'll come to our product archive, click plus to add a new one. We'll get rid of the pre-built templates because we don't want any of that. And instead of using the archive products like we would have done previously, let's just drag the title inside there. Let's change the styling on that a little bit as well. It doesn't look very good. Uh, we'll set that to be secondary, for example. Come back out. If you want to put an archive description, we can use that. But don't use the archive products because that's just going to use the old fashioned way of doing things. So if we drop that underneath there, you'll see this just pulls in the standard default option, which we are not going to use. So let's go ahead, delete that. Instead, let's go ahead and grab our loop grid. We'll drop that underneath the archive title. And you can see now this opens up the loop builder. This is the other way in which you could create the template. You can see this says create a template or we can just go ahead and choose the template from the one we've just created. So first of all, let's change this over to be products instead of posts. Let's go in here and type in woo. And there's our fruity woo loops. We'll select that. And you see there's our template now being pulled in. If we come into the query, you'll see by default, this is going to use the latest products, which isn't what you want. So hopefully this will be something that will actually default to the current query. Because if you create an archive page, then this is going to be used on all of the archives for your products, then you're not going to have the latest items. It's going to be the current query that's going to pass over that query parameter for the different category, for example. You've still got your include and excludes. We'll just add some pagination in. So we'll just simply come in and say numbers previous and next. You can apply your styling and all those kinds of things. Let's go ahead and publish this. Set our condition on here to be all product archives. Hit save and close. And now we've created that archive that's going to be used on all of our product pages. Let's come in and look, take a look at preview in this. And you can see there's our archive products. This is all our products. You can see all our products are listed inside here. If we come up to one of the subsections, for example, accessories, you can see there's our accessories, our socks, shoes, and hats. Come into something like sweaters. There's our sweater product we just created the layer for. And if we come back into our shop, everything shows up. Now, you see we've got the add to cart button, but this isn't actually a link. The only way you can kind of deal with that and make it semi useful, which like I say, this is beta, so don't use it on a live site. Let's come back out, edit our template. This may work okay, it may not, but I tried to do it on. If I do show quantity and we just put a different product in, for example, let's just say this hat, actually it now works. And the button actually rollover works as well. So let's try updating that. Let's come over into our products and Funnily enough, that's actually worked. When I tried this the last time, it didn't work. So you can see what I mean about this being a beta product and some strange quirks happening. And you were seeing this in real time the same as me. So now if I try adding this to the cart, that actually added to the cart. Whereas previously, it was just a, a null button. So very strange why that's kind of decided to work now. But it has decided to work. So let's go back out of here. So you can see that does actually work. So we come back over, you can see it's not picking up our styling properly. So we may want to come in and adjust things on here. So you can see our normal is fine, our hover. We can just put a different color on there, for example. We'll go with this dark blue. And you'd think that would work. However, we update it, refresh the page, and it's still using the default color for the main color. It's still kind of quirky. It's still not working 100% correctly, but it is a step in the right direction. As you can see, some things work sometimes, some things don't work other times. There's some kind of weird quirks going on, but it is a beta version of it. But I'm still excited to see where this goes because this is one of those areas that I think anywhere we can use a natural built-in loop builder inside Elementor to do away with third-party tools to do what I would consider to be a relatively basic thing is always a good thing. But as always, I welcome your feedback, comments, and anything you want to say about this. Drop those in the comment section down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.